Hey and welcome to the Detox Digest. Our podcast has been put together so that we can give you insights into life so that you can make every moment matter. So if you're interested in healthy things, sit back, relax and enjoy this episode. Hey and welcome to episode four of the Detox Digest, our podcast where we give you insights into life so that you can make every moment matter and just live healthier and happier. My name is Gareth and I am one half of Detox, a health retreat based out here in Spain that helps people do all things healthy. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about fuel. And if you listen to episode three, you'll know a little bit about the history of Fuel. Fuel is a recipe book that we wrote uh, a few years ago, and it was published in 2018. If you want to get yourself a copy, head on over to Amazon, uh, and it is called Fuel, Simple Juice and Meal Plans to Help You Get the Bounce Back in Your Step. Now, even though it's a recipe book, for us, Fuel is more a philosophy that we live by. We say in the book, at Fuel, we believe that happiness starts with how we fuel our lives. We put the fun back into healthy eating and living because at the end of the day, it's not what we eat, but how we eat that matters. And for us, Fuel is about approaching things with a renewed way of thinking. Everything we do, and we've created a manifesto for our retreat, is about balance and simplicity. And we've broken down fuel into four commandments. In episode three, we covered the F and the U. That's not a bad F and the U. The F is all about forget dieting. And the U is about understanding fuel. Today, we're going to go into the remaining two letters. And we're going to start with the E of fuel. And the E stands for eat well. Like we said at the beginning, It's not what we eat that matters, it's how we eat it that really makes a difference. When we were speaking about forgetting about dieting, we were talking about how it's up to us to take responsibility for what we put into our bodies. Our bodies can only do so much with the food that we give it. Uh, We want to eat because we're hungry, we want to eat because... We need the nutrients and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of times we don't take responsibility for the food that we put into our body. So the E stands for eating well, and that's really, really important. Uh, An important thing to think about when eating is to eat mindfully. Eating time is for eating, nothing else. Putting food into our bodies is potentially one of the most important things that we do every single day. It's the nutrients, it's the vitamins, it's the minerals, it's the calories and the energy that we need to get through the day. So when we eat, make sure that eating time is just for that. Don't work or don't scroll through social media while you eat, don't watch television Eat with people that you care about and people that you enjoy spending time with because what happens then is the body is more relaxed and it's better equipped to deal with the food. When I'm eating in front of the computer or when I'm eating and scrolling through social media, I can sometimes be in a highly emotive state. And when I am eating, my body is receptive. It is in the digestive process. So it's absorbing everything that I put into my body. When I'm in a highly emotive state, I'm releasing chemicals on all levels. Think about some of the emotions that you go through when you kind of like are scrolling through social media or think about some of the emotions that you go through when you're watching TV. TV was designed to create emotion. Think about the news. Think about your favorite soap operas. Think about reality TV. Think about competitions or whatever. We're constantly producing emotions inside our body. So when I'm eating, I'm digesting not just the food in my body, but also those emotions as well. Sometimes we will say to people, if you wake up in a certain mood, 
think back to what you were doing when you last ate your last meal. And a lot of times the two things can be directly related. So make sure that when you're eating, you are just eating. Chew your food properly. There's a reason that we have teeth in our mouth and not in our stomach. Your stomach kind of like is the holding tank for the food before it goes through the body. And it's where the, where the body starts to break down the food into smaller particles. Uh, look at it like this. If you put stuff in the sink and you have the drain and it's got those holes in it, only food of a certain size or only particles of a certain size can go through those drain holes. So when we have got food in our stomach, we're releasing those digestive acids and those digestive enzymes to break down the food to make them small enough to leave the stomach. If we chew our food properly, it leaves the stomach quicker. But also, when it goes into the intestines, the only way that the nutrients are going to get into the body is via absorption. They don't go straight into your system. They go through the walls of your intestines. They go through the linings of the intestines into your blood system. If my food hasn't been chewed properly and it's all chunky, I'm not going to get much nutrients out of it, am I? And then what's going to happen? Because I don't have enough nutrients in my body for it to function normal, I'm going to get hungry more often because my body is going to be craving those nutrients. So when I chew properly, I help the digestive process take place in my intestines. Another tip that comes to eating mindfully is to take a bite and then put your knife and fork down. Give your, son, give your body time and give yourself time to really taste the food that you're eating. And once you've swallowed what you have put into your mouth, then pick up your knife and fork for the next mouthful. A lot of times we're eating ahead. We're sitting and we've got a mouthful of food and we're already taking another bite or putting more food on our knife and fork and we haven't even given ourselves time to chew the food in our mouth properly and that's sometimes where a lot of people will eat really, really fast and when we eat really, really fast, we tend to eat more because the body doesn't have time to send the signals to our brain to say, hang on, the holding tank is full, so I'm just shoving in, shoving in, shoving in. And then because there is literally no more space, I can't eat anymore. And I've eaten way, way more. I mean, how many times have we eaten quickly? And then afterwards, we've just felt really heavy because our stomach is kind of like full. So putting your knife and fork down in between each mouthful really helps you to focus on the eating process and stay involved in it. It's a lot like, say, I'll read from the book here. Eating slowly is a simple way to avoid overeating. It takes 20 minutes for the brain to register that food is into the system. So more often than not, we actually need a lot less than what we really eat. Eat quickly, you eat more. Eat slowly, you eat less. So that's that one. Another part of eating well is to have a healthy relationship with food. Take a look around you right now at your physical environment. Is it neat and tidy? Or is it chaotic and disorganized? If you're anything like me, if I go to my office, it can be a little bit chaotic and a little bit disorganized. But I always make sure that my environment or the place that where I physically spend time eating, I always make sure that it's neat and tidy. I almost make sure, always make sure that it's clean because that environment is going to play a large part in how I approach my eating as well. Uh, always clean up the kitchen before you sit down to eat because you'll naturally have less energy afterwards because the body is using all the energy that it has for the digestive process. So give your time to relax after eating. A lot of times we'll eat and then we'll dive straight back into what we're doing without giving the body time and energy to process everything. Another thing when it comes to having a healthy relationship with food is to take a look around at the people who surround you. What are their eating habits like? Do they look healthy? Do they eat healthy? Or do you all have similar habits? Sometimes 
a healthy relationship starts, a healthy relationship with food will start by having more people around you who also have a healthy relationship with food. And the final thing when it comes to eating well is to create an eating experience. Make it uh, into a ritual, kind of like a ritual for yourself. You know, set the table and sit down and enjoy your food instead of eating it mindlessly in front of the TV or standing up in the kitchen or on the run or at your desk. Not only will you eat less, but you'll start to understand and hear when your body has had enough. Now, this is one that may split the crowds, but it doesn't really matter because that's what we're here to do. We want to find people who are interested in making life matter. Always say grace. Now, we don't say grace for religious reasons. Uh, you can if you want to. But saying grace means that you're putting yourself into a thankful state. If I say thank you for something, I'm going to appreciate it more. If I sit down in front of a plate of food and go, ah, not this load of slop again, I'm going to have a very different eating experience to one if I start my meal by saying thank you for this food. Saying grace puts us into a, uh, a positive frame of mind. Um, and that frame of mind will create emotions and chemicals inside your body, which you absorb. When you eat, like we said before, not only are you digesting your food, you're also absorbing your emotions. So say grace. Now, eating well covers quite a few topics, but the biggest one under all of this and one that we really, really encourage people to do is to respect your body. You only get one body this time around. So treat it with a little bit more respect than you're currently treating it now and take care of it. I sometimes get a little bit sad and a little bit emotional when I think about how I used to treat my body in the past. As someone who has dealt with an addiction to drugs and alcohol, I never had any respect for my body. I didn't care what I put into it as long as I kind of like was dealing with things in my own way, which at first when I started doing, doing it, I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. But then it became something that I was obsessed with and it became something that I had to do to get through the day. So if I look back at how I used to treat my body, it's no wonder that I got ill. It's no wonder that I got sick. Now I'm also a recovering self-harmer. So I used to, you know, disrespect my body physically. And I've got the scars in my arms and my legs and in other places that remind me every day how I used to treat my body. Now I'm pretty lucky. I consider myself to be lucky in that when I wake up in the morning and when I take a shower, I can see the scars that are there as a result of my past behaviors. And seeing those scars kind of like encourages me to take better care of my body. Because like we said in the previous episode, your body has one aim, and that is to keep you alive. Yet so often we treat it with disrespect. We fill it full of nonsense, and then we get really, really angry with it. And all it is doing at the end of the day is trying to keep us healthy. But we're not giving it the tools that it can keep us healthy with. And then we're wondering why we're out of shape. We're wondering why we're not feeling good. We're wondering why we're not as fit as we used to be or, or whatever it is. So take care of your body. You know, you don't get another one this time around. We only have one shot. You know, exercise. The car uses fuel to move around. So does your body. We don't just put fuel in the car and leave it in the garage and not drive it around. But a lot of times we just eat for the sake of eating and then we don't do anything to support the body in burning that off. Get into a habit of eating cert at certain times. You know, it, it's we're habitual creatures. So why not create habits that support us and move us forward than create habits that hold us back and make us sluggish? When we don't eat regularly, the body starts to demand food and it gets into the habit of having food on tap. So we're training our body to eat whenever the hell it wants to, and we're getting pissed off with it. But 
it only is doing what it can do to keep us alive. When we're hungry, we need nutrients. When we're hungry, we need those things that, that keep us going. And regular eating times will help us to curb our hunger and curb our cravings and at the end of the day, get more in touch with our bodies and what we're putting into it. You know, and as we learn to respect our body, we'll definitely start to take better care of it. We use the analogy sometimes of a newborn baby. If we were to give you a newborn baby right now, would you feed it the way that you feed yourself right now? Would you make it eat the way that you eat right now? Or if you wanted to be a healthy, happy human being, how would you teach it to eat? What sort of relationship would you teach it to have with food? Because when we start to eat well and have that better relationship with food and our body, it becomes a lot easier. Now, <clears throat> in case you hadn't noticed, I can get a little bit passionate, but it's only because I was lucky enough to be forced into that position where I had to make changes. And I never ever want anybody to get into that situation where the only option that they have to do things is to change everything. You know, what if we kind of like learned a little bit earlier? What if we kind of like said, okay, well, maybe this isn't working for me. I'm going to try a little differently to do things. And what if we just had that amazing utmost respect for this body that we have been given? Let's think about that one for, for just a moment or two. What if I had a little bit more respect for the body that I have been given rather than constantly looking in the mirror and telling it that it's not good enough, telling it that it looks like a heap of da-da, telling it that why can't you do this and why can't you do that and da-da-da. All it's trying to do is keep me alive. All it's trying to do is keep me going, yet I'm the one that is feeding it rubbish. I'm the one that is not giving it the respect for the amazing thing that it is. I'm going to end off there and I'm going to move on to the L of fuel. And the L stands for living better. When I start to take better care of myself and I start to look after my body and take care of my appearance, it does a few things. It improves my confidence. Confidence for us is simply being comfortable in our own skin and it comes from deep down inside of you. It's the ability to look at the person staring back at you from the mirror and saying, hey, you, we've got this. We can do this. You know, and when we start to take care of what we eat, we start to get more confidence. And when we start to get more confidence, we start to do things more. We have more energy. You know, when we live better, we have more energy. If our body is full of good quality foods, it will naturally have the energy to do the things that it's meant to do. And if we're not eating quite right, the body will use excess energy to break other stuff down, something that it shouldn't be eating. So that's why we'll have less energy. When we eat well, that energy is available for us to use and it gives us that bounce in our step. It gives us that twinkle in our eyes. It leads to weight loss naturally. You know, weight loss is a byproduct of healthy, balanced living. Now, here's the thing about weight loss. What happens when you get there? We can never continue to lose weight and lose weight and lose weight. Remember, the body's going to protect us. So if for you, it's going under a weight that your body thinks that it shouldn't be under, you're going to naturally crave things that make the body stay in its state. You're naturally going to crave things that take you away from being a weight that you shouldn't be. But a lot of times we get so focused on a certain number because we think that that's what we should weigh. We think that that's what we should look like. But we don't realize that when we respect our bodies and take care of what we eat, losing weight is a natural byproduct of that. And sooner or later, we're going to lose a point where unless we kind of like severely starve ourselves and push ourselves, it's almost going to be impossible to lose any more weight. And then the last thing that we are going to cover under living better 
is that we simply feel happier with who we are. Who I am is not defined by my weight and how I look. Who I am is defined by the relationship that I have with myself. And when I'm comfortable with that, it's a lot easier to show up as me in the world. I don't have to put on a mask. I don't have to pretend. Like for me, sharing something on a podcast like this sometimes makes me feel really, really uncomfortable because the way that I treat myself sometimes, and it's something that we're all constantly working on, is, oh, who am I to share that? Who am I to talk about that sort of stuff? But when I start to look at how I treat myself, I have a right to share that. I have a right to talk about the things that help me. Because if I want to help others, keeping knowledge to myself is just selfish. And when I feel happier with myself, I can share it with the people who want to listen. I don't have to pretend. I don't have to beat around the bush. I don't have to find scientific research and statistics to back up what I'm saying because I believe in what I'm talking about and I'm happy with showing up with who I am. And I'm going to read something that we wrote in the book under this part. It says, think about what children are like when you pay attention to them and give them praise. They smile from ear to ear. They stand up straighter and they do the best to do more of the thing that brought them that praise. The same goes for us. When we start taking care of ourselves, a ripple effect happens from the inside out. The ripple has an effect on everything in our lives, including those around us. Once you start applying the principles we'll, we have discussed, you'll notice things shifting and changing. And when I start to feel happier with myself, it's a lot easier to respect my body and follow all of the other principles. So there we have it, the fuel philosophy broken down for you. Forget dieting, understand food, eat well, and live better. So I hope that you found this helpful. I'm not going to, I was going to apologize if I got a bit ranty there, but it's only because I am so passionate about this and I get to meet so many people who kind of like are pushing themselves so hard because they don't think that they're good enough and they don't think that what their bodies are doing is good enough. But when we start having that better relationship with ourselves, when we start going inside and saying, okay, do you know what? This is okay. Then, you know, it makes us a lot happier. And when we're a lot happier, the people that we love are a lot happier. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Please give it a like. If you found it interesting, share it, comment below and let us know what you think. Give us some questions and they might make up some of the topics for future episodes and make sure you subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. Thanks for listening and I hope that you join us for the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye now.